Hello, a blessed morning to everyone. Welcome to Baptist Bible Church. Shall we all stand as we begin our morning worship service by singing the song, Blessed Assurance. We have this assurance from Scripture that Jesus, as the song says, is ours. Jesus is mine. So we have a Savior who is with us and who has died for us and secured salvation for us. What blessed assurance we have in Christ. Please join me as we say together on the first verse. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I in my Savior. in our opening prayer. Okay. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we pray to thank the Lord for this day that you gave to us, Lord. Thank you for everyone. Right? Thank you for the freedom that we can be able to gather ourselves to worship together as a church. Lord, we ask Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit to be in our midst in our worship service this morning, Lord. Help us to understand your word. Uh, help the speaker, Lord, as he will uh, preach your word, put words in his mouth, and give us the grace, Lord, to be able to uh, respond in obedience in our life. God, let uh, we ask forgiveness for our sins, and if there's anybody, Lord, who does not know you, as personal Savior. God, we ask, Lord, for um, that you bless in every aspect of our worship service this morning. For this is we pray in His name. Amen. You may be seated as we listen to our choir.
GCQ. When it's GCQ, you go to church quickly. Amen? Amen. So that we can worship the Lord. And for those of you who are watching us live on, on, uh, on our Facebook page, thank you for tuning in and watching. We pray that the Lord will continue to work in your hearts and this will, will be an encouragement to you. Well, uh, as I have said, we go to church quickly. Why? So that we can be able to be in, in Sunday school. Uh, we start Sunday school at 8 for the children. Uh, uh, followed by their Zoom meeting at 8.30. Then at 9 o'clock on our combined Sunday school, we are studying a very uh, interesting topic, a book, a book, the book of Acts. And uh, I'm, I'm very thrilled about how the gospel was uh, carried all the way from the western part to the eastern part and it reached to us. And we have now the, the responsibility to send the gospel, give, go, uh, uh, bring the gospel to other nations when we can be able to do so. So we praise the Lord for that. So please tune in and, and be here at 9 o'clock so that we can be able to study the book of Acts. And then and don't forget also this afternoon, our uh, young people's meeting. And then by 4 o'clock, our uh, afternoon service. And uh, every Wednesday, we have our service at 4 and then you can also watch it by 6. And our Bible studies every Saturday at 6, also with the ladies, every Friday, and also for the men, uh, every other Thursday. Okay, so don't forget all those schedules. Uh, we need them so that we can be able to be encouraged and to be uplifted in our spirit, especially during these hard times. Okay, so don't forget also to pray for Pastor Mike Tanyala, uh, still uh, undergoing therapy. You can still give to Pastor Mike. Uh, for his medical needs. So let's continue to pray for him and also his, for his family. And also don't forget to pray for our dear pastor uh, who just turned 86 last Tuesday. Um, um, he, he turned 86 and then the, just let's continue to pray that uh, he'll be, the Lord will continue to bless him and uh, to give him to give him strength. Uh, I, I talked to him last during his birthday. He said, 
uh, he was planning to be here this Sunday so that we can be able to be with us. But I, uh, it, it depends upon his uh, condition. So let's continue to pray that one day will be, he, be, he will be with us. Okay? And for that, uh, we still ha will be hearing a video from the children to greet him and also for some members uh, who want to greet our dear pastor. Let's watch this. Happy birthday! May the Lord continue to give you strength and God bless you more. Hi Pastor, we praise the Lord for your faithfulness and being true to God's word. May the Lord continue to bless you. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. One, two, three, go. 
Hi, Pastor. We wish you a wonderful birthday. Thank you for leading us closer to God. You are a blessing to our family. Love, love you. you. See you soon. Bye. Hi, Pastor Boyd. Just a simple greeting from all of us from the bottom of our hearts. Happy birthday, Pastor Boyd. We love you. Happy birthday, Pastor Boyd. We love you. Happy birthday, Pastor. May Almighty God continue to bless your life abundantly with His grace, His mercies, His peace, His joy, His wisdom, uh, His protection, and His love, and His provisions. We love you so much, Pastor. We are always praying for you. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Boyd. We love you. We miss you. And get well soon. Hi, Pastor Boyd. First of all, I would like to thank you for being such a great and wonderful pastor to each and every one of us especially to our family we pray that god continue to give you more strength and good health once again we are greeting you a happy, happy birthday, birthday and get well soon see you soon take good care pastor we love you So, let's continue to pray for our dear pastor. Alam mo si pastor, parang IATF yan eh. Alam mo yung IATF? A man of integrity, a man always praying, a man true to God's word, and a faithful man. Amen? Amen? So, let's continue to pray for our dear pastor. Okay. So, yan po. Uh, do we have anyone visiting with us for the very first time? Yan po ma. Meron po ba tayo sa kalagitnaan natin? We're so glad that you came. And also for those who are watching, if it's your first time, We would like to also uh, like to thank you for tuning in. Okay, maybe po ba? Wala na? Okay, let's all stand up and let's greet one another with our uh, wonderful wave. Okay. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome.
Mr. Joy, Mr. May, and Mr. Brother Rocky. Yun, tumama rin sa pangalan. Okay, um, good morning po sa bawat isa, especially po those members who are watching right now live uh, via Facebook. So magandang umaga po um, sa bawat isa. And I would like to get our message sa isa po sa pinakamagand, sa napakagandang awit po ng choir po kanina, Is Anything Too Hard for God? So that will be our uh, topic for uh, this morning. So may I request everybody to please stand up and open our Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 32, verses number 16 to 27. Jeremiah chapter 22, 32, verse 16 to 27. So I will read it, verse number 16 to 27. The Bible says here, Now when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase unto the Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, and stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompenses, the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them, and the great of the mighty God, the Lord of hosts, is, is his name. Great in thy counsel and mighty in work, for thine eyes are open upon all ways of the Son of Man, to give every one according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings which has set of signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day in Israel, and among other men, and has made thee a name at this day, and has brought forth the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, with signs and with wonders, and with a strong hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with a great terror, and has given them this land, which thou didst swear to their fathers to give them and land flowing with milk and honey. And they came into the inn and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice, neither walk in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this, this evil to come upon them. Behold, the mounds they are come unto the city to take it, and the city is given to the land of Chaldeans to fight against it. Because of the sword and the famine and of the pestilence and of the has broken is come to pass, and behold, thou seest it. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, buy thee the pill for money and take witnesses, for the city is given into the land of Chaldeans. The, then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of the, all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for 
bring us back here again to church to worship you, to listen to your word. Now, Panginoon, please open our hearts and give us understanding, Lord, as we study thy word. Now, Panginoon, pagpalaan niyo rin po those members who are watching right now. Now, Panginoon, ay kayo patuloy magbuhos at gabayan kayo, Panginoon, ibanan ni Espiritu. Maraming salamat po at dalangin sa Panginoon Jesus. Amen. So, you may now be seated. Okay, so... So, nabasa po natin dito sa my Jeremiah chapter 32, verse number 16 up to verse number 27. Actually, we're going to study from verse number 1 up to verse number 44 for us to see kung ano po talaga yung nangyari po dito uh, sa, book of, sa book of Jeremiah. So, as we can see here naman, so during this time, the people of God have walked away from God and they have embraced actually they embraced the godly or the, the gods of the, uh, of the of the pagan nations around them their character is actually we can see there in verse number 28 up to verse number 35 so we can see there yung character ng the people of Israel yung mga tao po dito they worship Baal okay so they worship pagans they worship sabi ng other gods they offered sabi natin yung mga their offering sa mga sa mga hindi tunay at buhay na Diyos. Because of their sin, because they embrace, sabihin natin yung kasalanan, God is bringing His judgment upon the people. So if you're going to remind, also recall our studies from the book of Habakkuk, we can see there that God used Babylonians, God used Chaldeans to judge them. It's also the same here in the book of Jeremiah. God used, uh, we, makikita po natin dito na pinahayag din po ni Jeremiah that it, this people of Israel, they will be judged also using uh, this wicked people and wicked, sabi natin, Babylonian. God is bringing His judgment upon His people. It was the time, sabi, of pain, sorrow, death, and judgment. So if we're going to read it in the book of Jeremiah, so we can see there yung uh, talagang pinagdaanan ng mga taga-Israel. And it was into, uh, sabi natin, that Jeremiah, uh, and this is the purpose of why the Lord sent Jeremiah to, to Israel to, to remind them about the judge, the coming judgment to their nation. To remind them that sabi na talagang, na talagang na, uh, si Sirain, oh, God will destroy their nation. Jeremiah was sent to people who would not hear his message. Jeremiah was sent to people na sabi na talagang they don't like or they don't listen to his um, uh, to, 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 to his message, kaya nga it was uh, for 40 years in his uh, in reminding these people na kung saan hindi po sila nakinig. Uh, 40 years, sabi natin, ilang dekada sila po ay pinaalahan ni Jeremiah that this land, this nation ay, 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 ay didestroy ng ating Panginoon. So it was a tragic time for the nation of Israel. Jeremiah was sent to them to preach a message of judgment. He was sent to the people to let them know that they had angered God and they were about to be judged. Jesus or Jeremiah was commanded to tell them their nation would be destroyed. So as a result of preaching of that reminder to them, as a result, sa pag-preach po ni Jeremiah about the judgment of their nation, he was arrested and thrown into prison. That is the very, sabi natin, very sad thing sa mga manggagawa minsan ng Panginoon. We are telling the truth. Pero kapag ang bansa po talaga, pag ang tao po talaga, ang tingin nila ay mali yung sinasabi mo. Talagang gagawa siya talaga ng paraan. So let's read it in verse number 1 up to verse number 5. It says here, The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. For then the king of Babylonian's army besieged Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the king of Judah's house. For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up, saying, Wherefore dost thou prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, before, behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. And Zedekiah, the king of Judah, shall not escape out of the hand of the Chaldeans, but shall surely be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, and shall speak with him mouth to mouth, and his eyes shall behold his eyes. In verse number 5, And he shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon, and there shall be, and there shall he be until I visit, saith the Lord, uh, though he fight with the Chaldeans, ye shall not prosper. 
Okay, kahit ang gawin nyo, kahit makipaglaban kayo dyan sa Kaljians, hindi kayo mananalo. Okay, kumbaga ayaw nyo hindi nagustuhan po ni, ni King Zedekiah, that's why he put uh, uh, um, Jeremiah in prison at pinakulong niya itong si, si Jeremiah because hindi niya nagustuhan yung, yung pinapangaral ni Jeremiah about the truth that this city will destroy, that this city or this nation ay mapapasakamay po and will be captive by Uh, uh, by, 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 by the Babylonian. So while Jeremiah was in the prison, the Lord came to him with a word of hope, blessing, and promise. Okay, so habang siya po yung nasa kulungan, na kung saan ay, actually, this, uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, he, he was, uh, sinulat niya po ito when he was in prison, na kung saan, kung nausap siya ng Panginoon, actually, ang dami, mamaya makikita po natin dito, yung mga impossible, yung mga impossible things, yung impossible things na ipapagawa sa kanya ng Panginoon. Kaya nga sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanya eh, di ba? Is, any, is, is anything too hard for me? Is anything too hard for God? And then, when, while, while he was in prison, God gave him a promise that God will destroy, yes, God will destroy the, the nation of Israel, but in, in verse number 36 to 44, we can see there that one day, Again, God will restore Israel. Okay? God will, uh, yung mga tao po, ng mga tagay sa atin, ibabalik po muli ng Panginoon doon sa may, sa kanilang, sa kanilang lugar. So, we can see here, while Jeremiah was in prison, the Lord came to him with a word of hope, blessing, and promise. The words of Jeremiah offer the same comfort to our hearts today. So, we, we know naman that we are now in tough times. During this pandemic, we are now, we are living in tough times. Spiritually, right? Marami na po sabihin natin, marami na po mga simbahan po ngayon na nagsara because the government, diba, they don't allow, diba, il ilang buwan po talagang hindi nila inallow na meron po mga, ganito po mga gatherings. So we praise and thank the Lord. Ang ganda po tignan po dito na marami na po tayo ulit. And we praise and thank the Lord na hindi po natin nakakalimutan na tayo po talaga ay magpuri at sumamba po sa ating Panginoon. So spiritually, maybe this is a, a tough time for, for us spiritually, economically, Diba? Yung bansa po natin And then sabi natin In the church Nakakalungkot Diba? Ilang buwan na po Pero iba talaga sabi natin Nakalimot na Alright? So hindi na Yung iba hindi na Hindi na dahil sa takot Yung iba dahil naging At least na lang po Na okay na siguro Kahit walang church So okay na siguro Kahit nandito na po sa bahay So I am saying na Yung manunod po sa atin Pero sabi natin Marami na po mga Marami mga kristyano po ngayon Na na during this, this, this tough time, nakakalimutan na po yung mga church services natin, even our family, as individual, di ba? So, as of right now, we are now facing a tough time. During this time also, Prophet Jeremiah is actually, he also experienced tough times. Okay? He also experienced uh, discouragement. He was also experiencing uh, yung mga bagay na hindi, nag, hindi, nag, hindi, mag, hindi maganda. Alright? So, that's why we can see here, but God promised him Di ba, may kita po natin mamaya na sabi nga, meron mga bagay na hindi ko kaya? Meron ba mga bagay? So, may, is there anything beyond my power? Di ba? Is there anything beyond my power? Kaya nga, the God of Jeremiah is also God or He is also God of our of, of ours today. Di ba po? Siya rin po yung Diyos din po natin ngayon. Kung sino po yung Diyos na Jeremiah before and same God that we have right now. So, may kita po natin, ano ba yung promise ng Panginoon sa Kanya? So, and then, another lesson that we can see here in Jeremiah chapter 32, Jeremiah asked by God to purchase a land, alright, in Jerusalem. Okay? God wants him to purchase a land, even sabihin natin na meron ng idea na itong lugar na ito ay isang war zone. Let's say, for example, if we're going to purchase a land or sabi natin a property, isa sa mga kinoconsider natin pag bibili po tayo ng property, sabihin natin location and yung accessibility. Diba? Isa, isa po yan sa mga titignan po natin, location. Kung baga kapag meron po tayong client, let's say, for example, merong isang ahente na lumapit po sa inyo or nag-inquire ka through online and then tumawag sa inyong ahente na ito and then nag-offer siya ng isang property, ng isang bahay, or condominium or ano man yung sabi niya, so, we, na meron siyang binibentang property. And then, at the end of, of your conversation, and then, ang ganda, sabi niya, maganda po itong property na ito, nagkakalagaw po ito ng 12 million, ganyan po, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Then, uh, but, at the end, sabi niya, um, but just to remind you, this property is actually nasa middle po ng fault line. Okay? Nasa, nasa, nasa gitna po siya ng fault line. 
sa tingin mo kaya tutuloy ka pa kaya? Fault line. Okay? Meron, uh, ako rin po nagtrabaho rin po ako sa real estate. Isa yan sa mga naka encounter namin, especially pag alam nila yung location. At pag alam nila yung location, ang talong agad nila, malapit ba sa fault line yan? Di ba? Kasi kapag nas magbibigay kami ng map, ipapakita namin sa kanila yung map, yung fault line, kahit sabi natin medyo malayo, pero nakikita nila merong fault line, umaatras sila. Di ba? During this time, sabi natin, God asked Jeremiah to purchase a land in Jerusalem. And then this place is actually in the war zone. In this place is actually as a war zone. Na ito, kaya nga po yung prayer dito ni, 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 ni Jeremiah in, in chapter 32, verse number 16 to, uh, to 25. Nandun po yung prayer niya that, that God will give him an understanding na ano ba yung naisipagawa sa akin ng Panginoon? Ano ba yung nais uh, sabihin sa akin ng Panginoon? Why I need to purchase a land, di ba? Na kung saan ay itong lugar na ito ay aatakihin and then mapapasakamay ng ibang lugar, ng ibang tao. Kaya nga ayun po yung sinasabi po sa my verse number 36 to 44 na meron po ang plan ng Panginoon na hindi sila magtatagumpay balang araw ibabalik din sila ng Panginoon. Okay, so ayun po yung may kita po natin dito. Our text as a very simple question First, from the prayer of Jeremiah, sabi nga, di ba, sa may verse number um, uh, 17, so let's go back in verse number 17, yung prayer dito ni Jeremiah, O Lord God, behold, Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by Thy great power and stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for Thee. And then God answered him also through question, verse number 27, Behold, I am the Lord. I am the Lord, the God of the all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? So let me ask you a question. Even sa tibo mga nanunod po yan sa sa live po natin. If you want, if you want to respond verbally, if you want to respond by 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 a comment, this is a question. Is anything too hard for God? If I'm going to ask you that question, is anything too hard for God? Is anything beyond His God's power? Kaya nga di ba sabi don sa may sa may kanta ng choir kanina sa chorus sabi don is anything too hard for God? Who's got a problem beyond His power to solve? Are there situations He's not the master of? Is anything too hard for God? Okay, so may kita po natin dito. Is anything too hard for God? So the answer is nothing. Right? So nothing. So if there's nothing too hard for God, there's the first thing that we need to understand, let us trust God's sovereignty. Right? Let us trust God's sovereignty. So that that's what we can see in verse number 17 up to verse number 22. God, sabi natin, help them, di ba? Okay. He performed miracles and wonders in Egypt, and also God created the world. He sustained the world. God provided our needs. He created and sustained the entire universe, di ba? And then He produced numerous healings and miracles and resurrections, di ba? May kita po natin yan. He answered and answered prayers. Kaya we can see there the sovereignty of God. When we say sovereignty, it means He is above all authority. Above all authority, He is in authority. When we say His authority, kapag nag-command po ang Panginoon, we need to comply. Kapag nag-order po ang Panginoon, we need to obey. Alright? So kapag nag-direct po ang Panginoon sa atin, may inutos po ang Panginoon po sa atin, we need to do. We don't need to ask God. Di ba? We don't need to ask God na, Lord, bakit? Ayun po yung sabihin po natin dito po sa may sa may book of Jeremiah na kasi nagkaroon din siya ng doubt na bakit po kailangan gawin ito? Na kung saan ay our our land is kaming sabi ngan ay aatakihin our land ay susunugin and the why I need to purchase a land okay? Bat kailangan ko pang bumili ng ng lupa okay? So if God is sovereign, He can do as He wills and as authority to command us to obey. So if we're going to believe that God is sovereign, there's no question, there's no doubt. Our goal and our work, our our activity is to obey Him, to do what the will of God. Okay. So if you if you're going to remember, the Bible says, "Atin pumpinag-aralan sa Book of Judges." Now there's a time na kung saan walapus silang hari, 
the Judges chapter chapters at chapter chapter 16 na kung saan their law is their is their self isa rin yan sa mga one one of the movies na kung saan ay napaw dati the purge okay so if you 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 know you know, you know the, the movie of the purge na kung saan there's a time na kung saan ay walang batas okay they can do whatever they want kailang maganakaw sila, papatay sila, gagawa sila ng, ng krimen. So, walang manguhuli sa kanila. Okay? Meron pong, meron pong ganyang movie na kung saan na there's one day na kung saan ay walang batas. Kahit anong gawin nila, magnakaw sila, pumatay sila, wala, wala pong, uh, wala pong uh, manguhuli sa kanila. So, ma, isa sa mga tao po o sa mga tao po ngayon, I we think na sometimes we are, we are like that. Na kung saan we are living na, we, na hindi na po natin na-acknowledge na merong Diyos. That we are living, di ba, na tayo po ay na, na, hindi na po natin na-acknowledge na merong Diyos na nakakita po sa ginagawa po natin. So let us acknowledge, let us trust God's sovereignty. Okay? The sovereignty of God is not a secondary issue, but is complete foundational to every or to, uh, to everything we stand on. If God is not sovereign, how can I trust Him? Okay, if God is not sovereign, how can we trust Him with every part of our life? That's why um, the, the, the reason we, we trust God, because we acknowledge His sovereignty. The reason we acknowledge God's power, di ba? We, we, the, 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 the reason we acknowledge uh, yung, yung, yung plan ng Panginoon po sa atin, because we, we believe sa, God, sa sovereignty ng ating Panginoon. So when we say sovereignty, we are referring our God who is all-knowing, all power. Diba? May, may kita po natin dyan. Uh, in, 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 in total control and has the absolute right to do all things according to His good pleasure. Tapos yung pagsinaya po natin, sovereignty. God has a plan for us. God has a purpose. God has a self-appointed work for us to do. And He is going to do it no matter who oppose Him. Kahit sabihin natin mag-disobey tayo sa Kanya, kahit sabihin natin na hindi tayo makinig sa Kanya, the sovereignty of God will never change. Hindi po magbabago yung uh, authority ng ating Panginoon. The Lord's hand is not weakened. His power is not decreased. He is able. He is omnipotent. He is mighty beyond measure. Always remember that. Diba? Kaya nga, basahin ulit natin dito sa my verse, number 17. O Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by the great power and stretch out arms, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands of recompenses and iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great and mighty God, the Lord of hosts, is his name great in counsel and mighty in work for thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his way and according to the fruit of his doing which has set signs and wonders in the land of egypt even unto the days of israel and among other men and has made thee of a name as this day and has brought forth thy people israel out of the land of egypt with signs and with wonders and with a strong hand and with stretch out arms and with great terror. You can see this? Diba? Yung sabihin natin yung kung paano sila pinagpala ng Panginoon, kung paano sila i-deliver ng Panginoon, kung paano sabihin natin pinakita yung promise ng Panginoon sa kanila, hindi paano pinakita ng Panginoon yung pagpapala sa kanila. So we, can, we need to see, to trust God's sovereignty. So, ayun din po yung dapat makita po sa buhay po natin that we need to trust God's sovereignty. Okay, pangalawa po, verse number 23 to 25. And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not the voice, neither walk in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore, thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. Behold, the mount they are come unto the city to take it, and the city is given unto the land to the hand of Chaldeans that fight against it, because of the sword and the famine and of the pestilence, and what thou hast spoken is come to pass, and behold, thou seest it. Verse number twenty five. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, buy thee the field for money, and take witnesses, for the city is given unto the hand of the Chaldeans. 
Chaldeans. So next thing is we can see, let us trust God in times of crisis. Let us trust God in times of crisis. So as we can see there, di ba, while the people of God have been blessed, yung binasa po natin kayo na in verse number 17 to 22, God bless them. Anong ginawa nila? They have refused to walk in the will of the Lord. That is the sad thing. Di ba, yung may kita po natin sa may verse number 22. Na lumayo pa rin sila sa kalooban ay sa verse na, yeah, 23 to 24. Na lumayo pa rin sila sa kagustuhan ng Panginoon. Hindi pa rin nila sinunod yung gusto ng gusto ng Panginoon. Sana po hindi po tayo maging ganyan bilang isang man ng palataya. Always remember that God bless you. Marami na pong pinagpala ang Panginoon po sa atin. God bless us so much things. But the sad thing is, kung kailan tayo pinagpala ng Panginoon, doon tayo lumayo sa Diyos. Kung kailan tayo pinagpahan ng Diyos, doon naman tayo nakalimot sa Panginoon. Di ba? Kaya natin makikita ba ito, God, or while the people of God have blessed them, they have refused to walk in the will of the Lord. A result, anong result ito? They are experiencing His judgment on their nations. On their nation. As the result of their disobedience, as the result of their, sabi natin, refusing to walk in the will of the Lord, they experience the judgment on their nation. Kaya nga may kita po natin dito, di ba sabi nga, even, even si, um, si, si Jeremiah, he confused by what, uh, what's happening around him. Kaya nga yung verse number 24, it says here, Behold the mount they are come unto the city of take it, and the city given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Di ba? Na kung saan, uh, ito, pong, ito pong Israel, sabi natin, mapapa sa kamay. Mapapa uh, makokontrol, sabi natin ng, ng Babylon yan. So we can see here, ano po ba yung naging problem? O yung, uh, ayun po yung naging problem po dito, na kung saan, itong mga taong ito, di ba, lumayo sa Panginoon, they refuse to walk in the will of God. And then, ano po, paano po sumunod si, si, um, si Jeremiah, even in times of crisis, still, Jeremiah obeyed the Lord in verse number 25. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, buy thee the field for money, and take witnesses for the city is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. So ano po ba yung nangyari doon? Balikan po natin sa verse number 6. Verse number 6. So may lumapit po sa kanya. So in Jeremiah's, and Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Verse number 7, Behold, Hanamil, the son of Shalom, Thine uncle shall come unto thee, saying, Buy thee my field that is in Anathoth, for the right of redemption is thine to buy it. So Hanalin, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison according to the work, words of the Lord, and said unto me, Buy my field, I pray thee, that is in Anathoth, which is in thy country of Benjamin. For the right of the inheritance is thine, and redemption is thine, uh, buy it for thyself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field of Hanamil, my uncle's son, and that was in Hamathoth, and weigh him the money, even 17 shekels of silver. And I will subscribe the evidence and sealed it, and took witnesses, and weigh him, and money in the balances. So I took the evidence of the purchase both that which was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was open. And I gave the evidence to the purchase and to the batuk, Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Maasiah, and the sight of Hamaniel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. So as we can see here, na... Yung may kita pa natin kayo na, kung saan di ba, may kita pa natin, there's a problem, no? saan ay, namang problema siya, bakit kailangan kong bumili ng lupa? Okay? Na kung saan this, this land is actually under attack. This land is actually ay makukontrol, na sabi natin, ng, 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 ng Chaldeans or ng Babylonians. And then, may kita po natin dito, even na merong ganong confusion, even na merong ganong problem, still he obeyed God. Binili niya pa rin yung lupa. Even na hindi niya nakikita kung ano, ano ba yung naisipakita ng Panginoon. Even na hindi niya alam, he, don't, he doesn't know kung ano ba yung plan ng Panginoon sa kanya. Still, he obeyed. Sometimes we are also, we need to be like that. Na even, sometimes kasi sumusunod lang tayo sa Panginoon kapag alam na natin yung gagawin. 
Sometimes we, we, we are doing something because we know, we, we know now what, to, what we're going to do. Diba? We know na kung saan tayo lalapit. We know na kung ano ba talaga yung mangyayari kung bakit natin ginagawa isang bagay. But sometimes, if we don't know what, what, what's the plan, doon po tayo, sabi natin ang iisip, ano bang gagawin? Diba? Kaya nga, after Jeremiah is thrown into prison, he is commanded by the Lord to purchase a piece of property. Sabi nga doon sa kanya, Uncle Son. And then, this transaction caused Jeremiah some serious moment of doubt. Kung bagay, sabi mo kayo, nagkaroon na siya ng doubt. Why? Diba? So, why, we, why I need to buy a property? In the first place, kung sa atin po, diba? kung bakit tayo bumibili ng property? Because, for, yes, for investment. Okay, and then, uh, bumibili ka ng property because you want someday magtatayo ka ng bahay mo. Or bumibili ka ng property because maybe uh, you want to uh, build, uh, dyan mo ilalagay yung, yung business mo in the future. So kaya kapag magtatayo ka ng business o magtatayo ka ng bahay, sabi ko nga kanina, isa sa mga tinitignan mo dyan is yung location. Okay? Kaya nga, yung location, let's say for example, sa panahon natin yung location, o saan ba yung property na yan, saan ba yung uh, binibenta mo na yan? So, malapit ba si school yan? Malapit ba sa mga establishments yan? Malapit ba sa mga groceries yan? Kaya nga yung iba, para mas mabilis mabenta yung kanilang property, just like yung mesa, di ba? So, ubus agad yan. So, sa baba, no, meron na silang, kubaga, one-stop na sila. May grocery na sila, bababa ka na lang, nandyan na. Isa yung sa mga gusto nila, and then malapit sa mga schools, mga trabaho na na-center. Uh, kung baga, uh, mas lalo nagiging mahal naman ang property. So, kung may kita po natin dito, sa, 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 life, sa, sa, sa life ni Jeremiah, even na hindi, parang hindi yata magandang bumili ng lupa dito, but still, sinunod niya pa rin ang Panginoon. At alam niya na merong gagawin ang ating Panginoon. So the fact, when the Lord works in ways that we do not understand, sometimes we are confused. Diba sometimes pag di natin alam ang gagawin, we, we, we are confused. And we, we, we are sabihin natin talagang aminado tayo dyan, that we confess sometimes na uh, we are confused and because we don't understand yung mga bagay na nangyari sa paligid natin. Sometimes ba ito yung Panginoon, Lord, bakit nangyayari itong pandemic? Sometimes, meron kang problema nararanasan sa buhay mo and you ask God, Lord, why, bakit nangyayari ito? Diba? Sometimes, we, we, we ask God about that. We know that the Lord wants us to do. Okay? And sometimes, we even do it. But it often seems unnatural and no strange to us. The worry about that what the rest of the world thinks about our action. Kaya nga, minsan, diba, uh, ginagawa natin ng isang bagay because alam natin yung gagawin natin, sometimes we are afraid to do something because ayaw natin sabihan tayo ng ibang tao na, ano bang ginagawa? Di ba? You, 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 that you are fool. Okay? But in the life of Jeremiah, hindi niya iniisipin ko anong sasabihin ng ibang tao sa kanya. Ang ginawa niya ay sumunod lang siya sa Panginoon. Okay? He trust God even, sabihin natin, he was in prison. Okay? He trust God. Kung maga, uh, even sabihin natin na siya ay nasa circumstances. He obeyed God, no matter what. Because alam niya, pag sinabi ng Panginoon, utos ng Panginoon, He knows na kung saan ay gagawin or iingatan or sabi natin, hindi siya pabayaan ng ating Panginoon. So now, the question is for you, ibabalik ko po sa inyo, at titiwala ka ba sa Panginoon during this time? During this crisis? During this tough times? Diba? During this period? Kamusta na po yung pananampalataya po natin bilang isang mananampalataya? Diba? So, and the next is verse number 26 to 33, or hanggang yung mga matapos po tayo, hanggang 44, let us trust God's comfort. Let us trust God's comfort. Yung comfort po ng Panginoon po natin. The Lord speak to Jeremiah to bring him comfort in the hour of his crisis. What God says to Jeremiah is this verse is surely comforted his heart. So, ano po yung sinabi ng Panginoon, to, Panginoon dito? Verse number 26, and 27. So, 26 and 27. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Because he's, Jeremiah is praying for understanding. Jeremiah is praying that God will show him ano ba talaga yung plan ng Panginoon sa kanya. And then God answered him, Is anything too hard for me? Is anything beyond my power? Is, is there anything beyond my power? Diba? Kaya nga yung, yun po yung comfort ng Panginoon po kay Jeremiah. God's comfort him diba? through his power. 
by His power. Comforted by His power. Di ba yung sabi at yung napag-aral ni Pahin, nabanggit po yan sa may, sa may Sunday school po natin kanina. Okay? God tells Jeremiah that He will indeed bring judgment upon the people of Israel because of their sins. Yes, as we can see there in verse number 28 to 35, pero yung sabihin natin, di ba, yung, yung power ng Panginoon na pinakita ng Panginoon doon yung kung bakit sila bibigyan ng judgment, pinakita ng Panginoon why God will give them judgment. But still, sabi ng Panginoon sa kanila, yung promise ng Panginoon po sa kanila. Alright? In verse number 36 to 44. So let's read it verse number 36 to 44. Napaagan na po ng promise ng Panginoon dito. And now therefore thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning his city, whereof ye say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon, by the word, by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of the countries, whether I have driven them in, the, in, in mine anger, and in my fury, and great wrath, and I will bring them again unto the place, and I will cause them to dwell safely and they shall be my people and I will be their God and I will give them one heart and one way that they sh may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me yea I will rejoice over them to do them good and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul for thus saith the Lord like as I have brought all this great evil unto these people, so I will bring upon them all the good that I have promised them, and field which shall be uh, bought in this land, whereof he say, it is desolate without man of beast, it is given into the hand of the Chaldeans. Men shall buy fields for money, and subscribe evidences, and seal them, and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin, and the places about, about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, and the cities of mountains, and in the cities of valley, and in the cities of south, for I will cause their captivity to return, saith the Lord. Diba? Ang ganda po ng promise ng Panginoon sa kanila. Ito, ayun po yung sabihin natin na sa una parang hindi maintindihan ni Jeremiah why I need to buy, o, diba? Itong property na ito. Kasi may promise ng Panginoon sa kanila that God will gather them again and they will return to their land. That God will bring back them to their, uh, to their land. So ayun po yung isa po sa mga nagpa-comfort kay Jeremiah, yung promise ng Panginoon po sa kanya. Yung promise ng Panginoon sa kanila. Kaya ano man po yung nangyayari sa Israel right now, I believe, di ba? Matapos din yan. And God will bless them. Okay? He was comforted by God's promises. Okay? God tells Jeremiah that the people of Israel will fall and they will go away into Babylonian captivity. He also tells the prophets that He will bring them home again. He will gather them to Himself and they will serve Him. He will be their God and there will be His people. Okay? So sometimes, sabi nga, the Lord uses her crisis in our lives to mold us, grow us, and develop us. So sometimes, ayun po yung mga ginag, kung bakit may mga crisis po sa atin. So don't think na kung bakit may crisis sa buhay mo because God wants to destroy your life. No. Because kung bakit tayo may mga crisis, the Lord uses crisis in our lives to mold us, to grow us, and to develop us. Ayun din po yung nakita po natin dito sa life ni Jeremiah. God gave him, sabihin natin yung mga bagay na so hindi niya maintindihan. But God wants him to mold him na magtiwala sa Panginoon na even na hindi niya maintindihan yung isang bagay, even na hindi niya maintindihan yung plan ng Panginoon, all you have to do is sabi nga sumunod sa will ng ating Panginoon. Sumunod siya sa gusto ng ating Panginoon. He uses pain, hardship, suffering, and trials of life to make us more like Jesus. He is the God of hardship, God of trials, He is still God of impossible. The God of the Old Testament, also our God today. The God of Jeremiah, the God of Habakkuk, He is also our God today. Kaya po, it's a great blessing for us na kung saan, no matter what, di ba, isa sa pagpapalaga sa papak, 
papaalala po sa atin. No matter what, whatever happens, lagi natin katandaan, there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God. Why? Because there is no promise too hard for God to fulfill. There is no promise for God, or there is no promise too hard for God to fulfill. There are thousands of promises in the Bibles. In the Bible, there are thousand promises in the Bible, and God will keep His word. If God made the promise, He cannot lie. There is no promise too hard, diba? to God or for God to keep. There is no prayer too hard for God to answer. Sometimes we have prayers, and sometimes we are asking, "Kaya kaya sa gutin ng Panginoon to." Don't ask that because there's no there's no prayer too hard for God to answer. Ano man yung panalaki mo, whatever your uh, your prayer request, there's there's no prayer too hard for God to answer. There's no problem too big for God to solve. It's a wonderful song. Diba? There is no problem to be. God cannot solve it. Diba? There is no sorrow too deep. He cannot shoot it. Diba? So He will carry it away. So ayun po yung sabi nga, the, there is no a problem too big for God to solve. And the most important thing is, there is no person too hard for God to save. Kahit sabihin natin, itong taong ito ay matigas ang puso. Kahit itong taong ito ay rebellious. Pero pag ang Panginoon ang kumilos sa Kanya, there's no too hard di ba, person or there's no person too hard for God to save. So let us be reminded for that promises ng Panginoon na kung saan na Ano man yung pinagadaanan po natin ngayon? Diba? He can save if we are lost. He can help you if you have need. Diba? He can comfort you if, your heart, if our heart is broken. Kung ikaw ay broken, lumapit ka sa Panginoon, God will never leave you nor diba? forsake you. He can love you if you are lonely. Kaya nga huwag mo sabihin na wala na nagmamahal sa akin. Diba? Nandiyan ang Panginoon. Okay? He was always there. He can restore you if you, if you are fallen. Diba? Kung tayo na dapa, God is there for us to rise up. Nandyan po po ang Panginoon po sa atin. So for our application, we need to see the strength and power of God's hand. Don't underestimate yung power ng Panginoon. Don't underestimate kung paano sasagot ang Panginoon ng panalangin mo. Don't underestimate kung paano um, mag-solve ng Panginoon sa mga problems mo. We need to see the strength or the might and power of God's hand. Next is, let the comfort of God's promises give you peace and encouragement regardless of what you face in this life. Right? Let the comfort of God's promises. Kaya nga may kanya tayo, standing on the promises. Kasi pag kinalimutan mo yung mga pangako ng Panginoon, even sabihin natin the promises of God to those uh, Old Testament Bible characters, Isa sa kita po natin yun eh, even may mga hardships, pero may comfort ng Panginoon sa kanila that, that God will deliver them. Okay? Sometimes we don't understand the Lord or His ways, but our duty is to trust Him in spite of what we do not know or what we cannot see. That is what we call faith. Kahit hindi mo nakikita, pero nagkitiwala ka sa Panginoon. Kahit hindi mo nakikita, pero sumusunod ka sa Panginoon. Kaya ngayon, i-advance ating isip natin. Lord, uh, I, I know that you will, uh, you are, you're commanding me to do this. You are directing me to do this. Even Lord, I don't understand. Sige, Panginoon, susunod po ako. Diba? Susunod po ako. Napaagad ang awit niyan. Diba? Susunod po ako. Kaya nga, ang bawat isa po sa atin ang dito. If you are facing crisis right now, if you are facing trials right now, if you have more prayer requests, if you have a big Sabi natin problems sa buhay mo ngayon. Always remember, di ba? There's nothing impossible with God. There's nothing too hard for God. All you have to do is to trust Him and call Him. Let us pray. Takila po namin Diyos sa sa langit. Or thank you once again for reminding us from the life of Jeremiah. Yes, Lord. He experienced circumstances. He experienced hardships. He experienced Many things, Panginoon, sa kanyang buhay, even the things that he can understand. No, Panginoon, pagpalayan mo po ang bawat isa. And help us, Lord, 
to, re to, to remind us that there's nothing too hard for you. Whatever happens, ano man Panginoon yung haharapin namin, there's nothing too hard for you. As we have our invitation, may request your brother to please stand up. Where are you right now? Nasaan na po kayo ngayon? Are you facing circumstances? Are you facing trials? Are you facing hardships? Or you still have prayer requests na hindi pa sinasagot ng Panginoon? And just always remember, don't doubt, don't remove your faith, and always remember, there's nothing too hard for God. Lord, I don't understand what's happening. Lord, I, I don't understand why is this happening sa buhay ko, Panginoon. Yes, sometimes we have questions like that. We are confused. But, sabi ng Panginoon, trust Him. Tiwala ka sa Panginoon because there's nothing too hard for God. So if you have prayer requests, if you, have, if you want to come in the altar, Lord, I believe in you. I surrender all. I will give everything. Lord, I can't with my own. Lord, hindi ko kaya ito. This is impossible sa buhay ko, Panginoon. But I believe that there's nothing too hard for you. Meron ka bang gusto ilapit sa Panginoon at gusto mo i-surrender yan sa Panginoon and you want to trust Him? Meron po ba? And the altar is open for this invitation. Lord, I trust in you. I believe that there's nothing too hard for you. Do you have prayer requests like that? Or do you have a commitment sa Panginoon? Lord, I surrender all. I surrender all. And if you are not safe, and if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and you think, sabi natin na hopeless ka, and you think na sa tingin mo ay wala kang pag-asa, no. There's nothing too hard for God. God will save you. There's no person too hard for God to save. Kat gano tayo makasalanan, still, God loves you and God wants you to be saved. Meron po ba dito sa ating mga bisita o sa ating mga nanunood po via Facebook? If you want to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, don't hesitate to contact Baptist Bible Church and we will pray for you. And if you are here, sa ating side, and if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, come and accept Him. Let us pray. Father God, thank you once again for this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us blessings. Thank you, Lord, for using Jeremiah sa buhay po namin, Panginoon. Now, Panginoon, continue to bless us. Continue, Lord, to use this word as we grow spiritually, as we look on you, Lord, that no matter what, we need to trust you and we need to believe that there's nothing too hard for you. Maraming salamat, Lord. Ito yung daming dalangin sa Panginoon Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jay, for bringing God's message for today. I would like now it's time to worship the Lord through our giving. I would like to call all the ushers to please come. And just a reminder uh, for those of you uh, who are uh, watching us on live on, on Facebook, you can come. You can give your uh, offering through the bank's account numbers to be posted on your screen. And just a reminder, it's our 25th week. Almost mid-year na po tayo on our faith promise giving. Our goal is 70,000 per week. Our uh, dapat ang goal natin ngayon is 1,750,000. E tama tama yung message natin. Is there too anything too hard for God? Kaya ba natin 'yan? Amen. Amen. Let's be uh, faithful in our giving as what we have promised to the Lord. Okay, I would like to call brother Kaloy to please come. Uh, to lead us for our operatory prayer. Okay, let us uh, all go to the Lord in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for uh, this uh, time that you have given us uh, to worship you, Lord, to our giving to, 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 towards uh, uh, our tithes and offerings, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that uh, you would um, eh, uh, use this, uh, all of these uh, uh, tithes and offerings, Lord, for, uh, for the glory of your name, Lord, and to, to spread the good news of our salvation, Lord, and, and that uh, you would bless us, Lord, because nothing is impossible for you, Lord. You will always uh, bless us and give us uh, those uh, offerings and tithes uh, for your glory, Lord. And all of these things we ask and pray in the mighty name, sweet name, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. <laughs> Are you happy today? Amen. Are you happy today to, be, today to be in church? Amen. Okay. So don't forget this afternoon, children's, uh, our young people, and also our evening service. Oh, let's all please stand up and let's be dismissed with a song. Okay. So, Brother Edwin. Let us sing the song Trust and Obey. We can flash the lyrics of the song Trust and Obey. Hymn number 40. All together on the first verse, ready, sing. When we walk with the Lord in the light of God's people say, Amen. You are dismissed.